Hello, welcome to Mamoli Lexington Part 3. I'm your host, Rich. This is Armax Models, my YouTube channel, where I build models and sometimes, uh, yeah, little fun fixtures to help me assemble them, or similar tools and whatnot. But, uh, that's kind of besides the point. We'll get to why I mentioned the tools towards the end. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to cover in this video how I got from a sort of covered skeleton to this point here. Where we have some, I guess these are called shear strikes or something. And then there's also this kind of wall up here going on. And all that other fun stuff and I think looks reasonably good considering it's my first wooden ship model. But, uh, to get there, uh, yeah, we're going to have to go through the video. But first, before I do that, I would like to thank 30 subscribers. Uh, thank you all for... Kind of signing in on that and bumping me up in the YouTube algorithms, I guess. And uh, I want to give a special shout out to uh, I think my most recent one, whose name I was able to get on my this person subscribed list, uh, Namtron Hill. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Um, please feel free to correct me if you have. Um, and with that, I'm going to say on with the show. And on we go. So, yep, this is back in time, back when the boat wasn't fully covered, and I still had a bunch of um, wood things coming off the end. So one of the first things I did there was uh, trim them off, just to make it easier to handle the boat, as well as to uh, get the, rid of the excess. So I have this kind of, um, I have these old X-Acto handles, I still can use them because I have some uh, razor saw type things. Not as good as some of the ones I've had in the past, but they did do the job well enough uh, to, for me to keep going. And then, of course, I use a scalpel just to trim off some of the uh, bits. Then I take a swig of something and go ahead and start adding ever more planking. Trying to estimate how much. And uh, I make a few mistakes here. Um, these instructions are actually fairly particular on a second and third reading of um, just where what thickness or what uh, dimensions of plank go where. I guess that's a lesson I'll have to learn for the next time I do a wooden boat. But uh, as you can see, after a bit of work, I uh, go ahead and just um, start doing my cuts and everything else. And I've learned about this point, or maybe I mentioned the last video, to go ahead and just glue along the whole thing and then use these pins, which, well, I'll mention it a little later. But uh, yeah, I want to get away from pins. You'll learn fully why later, but uh, they can slip. Yeah, that hurt. But uh, anyways, there I am sanding, trying to taper things down to make them fit as easy as possible. And um, yeah, so I'm also using that uh, brass square tube as a guide. I guess any straight edge would do. And there we go. Then I'm just traveling up both sides of the boat, trying to keep that tension even and uh, take the pins and just put them in. I'm using tin T-pins because they're easier to push in. They're also easier to pull out. Uh, now I try to get everything nice and lined up on a um, on well the table like that to try to keep the um, back end of the boat somewhat uh, free of being pressed on. And this doesn't end up working despite a valiant effort, I think, on my part to uh, get everything nice and supported. So, uh, yeah, but that little back piece of the boat there with the two holes and it came off earlier. And, well, here's the slow motion section then. All right, so I tried a couple ways to get around the fact that that little bit there gave out on me. Flipping thing. And uh, popped off the back. I guess I should have seen that coming or something. But, uh, so yeah, now I had to think of a way to get around that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, leave it off try to wipe up some of the glue that I had put down hoping it would make it stick again and uh, yeah when it's time to reapply I'll have to dig around here with a scalpel but that's actually perfectly fine with me as long as I can keep going because I want to get this done done good but done because we got a dreadnought to get back to then a B-17 and then finally finally the big project but not before the little ones are done all right, let's get back to it then, shall we? And back to it we get with some nice upbeat music and me 
repeatedly making this thing look kind of like a hedgehog with all those pins and laying glue and all that. So, and just to make sure that we are all on the same page, what I've been doing is that little brass tube there, I use it as a straight edge for when I kind of cut my tapers into these planks of wood. Sometimes I sand it out just to even things out a little bit. And uh, it's either on this or the next sets, I started actually tapering both ends of these. So I was previously tapering just the front, and then I started tapering both sides to try to make things nicely fit, because, well, it wasn't quite nicely and easily curving. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing now. As you can see, adding pins upon pins upon pins. Getting ever closer to the one that ends up uh, sticking into me instead of in the model. You don't see that in this footage. I, I pulled that footage. It was on camera. Uh, it, uh, just just watch it. watching that makes me upset. Uh, oh, well. Either way. So, again, bend. So, it's essentially bend to shape. Sometimes use a, uh, you know, bottle or something because it's circular. It's kind of mandrel. Bend it, add the taper, glue along the entire length and along the sides. So it's kind of glue into the other pieces of wood as well. And then, you know, just glue it all into place. And uh, there we go. So, yep, that holds that in together with those pins. And then I just keep flipping, you know, back and forth. Now, again, this is my first boat model. It was a rather abrupt start to this playlist. It's not that I've gotten tired of the Dreadnought. I was actually getting really excited to finish it. But... A close friend of mine really enjoys boat models, like wooden boat models like this, and has a collection of them, and he's, uh, he's having a bad time right now, so I figured it's a bit of a gift, try to lift his spirits a bit, uh, get him a late birthday present, that I'd uh, go ahead and crank this thing out for him. Yeah, and, uh, just as a, a side note, which is rather appropriate to the, uh, music, which is kind of sad, but also beautiful, um, I'm pulling for you, bud, if you see this. I really am. Hoping things get better for y'all. All right. Well, that, that, I'm not sure if it was that or the music that made the party die, so let's bring it back. I guess this is the part where I tell a joke or something while I'm just, again, pinning things in. You'll notice I'm also kind of following the curve, trying to best to follow the curve at the back as well. I end up covering the whole keel, and uh, you'll see me mention in the next... Uh, thing that it says, hey, you're supposed to leave a space uh, you know, from the keel. It meant the back bit here rather than the uh, very bottom of the boat. <laughs> but, uh, oh, well, it still looks good to me, so I'm going to keep going with it. Um, famous last words. But uh, then again, hey, I added an interior to the Dreadnought, and it took me about a... And I'm not even done. It's been about a year, so... <laughs> yeah... Thankfully, I don't see this model taking much anywhere near that long just because I'm, you know, not adding insane details like an interior. I will be doing a different boat, though, because, uh, one, I lost its original, and two, I just really hated the look of that, uh, boat that it had. So I may have to get a little extra timber for this, but, yeah, that's life. Again, curve, glue, pin, repeat. And it worked pretty, and it works really well. Until, again, as I mentioned, a pin ends up stuck in me instead of in the wood. Yeah, it wasn't fun. <laughs> Thankfully, I pull that footage because we don't need to see me screaming. Even in 20x speed. Anyways. So yeah, there I go. Moving around. And I do make a mistake at some point. Again, since this is the first layer of, um, of this... It doesn't quite, you know, it doesn't quite, uh, you know, a big deal, because I'm going to cover it with more decorative wood. But, um, that's kind of besides the point. And I mentioned something in the uh, low speed section coming up in just a moment or two. Uh, that doesn't quite, um, yeah, it's actually that this is the first layer, and I mentioned how there's supposed to be a space around things. And that's where I make the mistake I just talked about, where it's like, oh, the space is supposed to be here, and nope, it's supposed to be from the back that I'm covering up. Hmm. So, it says it's better to leave a space of four millimeters, but this ain't even, and I want it to be even, and now I'm wondering, what do I do? Uh, well, I got a bunch of wood scrap here. I could just fill it in. 
That might be worthwhile to do. We'll see. All right, back to the, all the sanding and shaping that I can manage to pull on this. Here we go. And not only do I do sanding and shaping and sawing off the back bits there, what I also end up doing is, uh, this is where I truly learned that uh, these instructions, I should really be more careful about reading them because it said this thickness here, this slightly different thickness and dimension there. Oh, well, I still think it's coming out good, and again, this is the first wooden model boat that I'm ever building, so... Yeah, entirely new medium for me. But, uh, again, you know, taking it on because I got a friend who really enjoys these, and I figured, you know, a good, heartfelt gift would really kind of lift the spirits up. So, yep, there we go, sanding and sanding and sanding. Vigorous manhandling of a long, thin, flesh-toned um, thing on YouTube. <laughs> I have found the joke. <laughs> I wasn't going to add this, but uh, I'm adding it now. Uh, you know, I don't say that these things are for kids, because you don't want to do that and, you know, leave your channel leave people unable to comment because i like hearing from you guys and, you know getting feedback and all that that's good that's part of the, why this channel exists uh but um you know i'm not sure if uh youtube's gonna kick back and say yeah we're not gonna let you show this or not i mean phallic thing flesh tone thing that sounds pretty you know not for kids already uh I mentioned, I mentioned something else of, um, ah, yes. I mentioned, uh, the different name I originally had for the caulking of this boat. And, uh, well, now I, I now I think I've probably done it for, um, uh, well, we'll see if this video makes it or not. <laughs> uh, knowing the AI, though, you mentioned caulking in the presence of wood, and it's going to look at this footage and go, yeah, you mean cock and balls. I mean, hi. <laughs> so, yeah, there's the, uh, you see that oil bottle there of um, airbrush oil? That's the main thing I use as a kind of mandrel for bending these uh, wooden planks. And now that you've seen me do the uh, bottom, I'm also doing that top uh, railing area. So, uh, yep. Add the glue. And then go ahead and add all that on. Pin very carefully. And somewhere in this will be the point where it um, I skip over. but And it went into the thumb. Uh, oh, yep, here it is. It's coming. We're going to see a skip. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm just going to get off of that. And just let, let the uh, guy on the safe side of the monitor, well, safe side now, uh, make that mistake and just not, um, you know, not put it into the film. Uh, I knew I'd eventually do it, too. You, you know, you ever look at look things in hindsight, and it's like, yeah, this is kind of risky here. If this thing slips... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I do it somewhere. Not sure where, but I do end up doing it. I think, okay, I think the bad part's passed. Um, yeah, okay, I think, I think, keyword. So now I'm looking up for other parts that, uh, these stri are the strips that I mentioned earlier that should have been towards the top of the boat, but weren't, because, yeah, I kind of, kind of screwed the pooch on not only where these, you know, go, but also their, you know, placement of the, uh, quote-unquote regular first layer of planking. So, yeah, there's supposed to be like a gap to put this thing called the shear strake in, but I ended up just putting it on top of these, which I'm fine with. Again, as I said, first time making one of these, not, you know, really, not really experienced with it. And, uh, this is a model of which I learned lots and lots. And, um, well, I will gain a really valuable lesson for the Dreadnought, though, which is about rigging, because this boat is nicely rigged, and I'm going to want to make sure that it's uh, rigged. Some of that there, you saw me reading the instructions and realizing some of my mistakes. Here I am just filling in some of the last bits of the um, of that uh, boat, because you are supposed to fully plank down to the bottom. 
and uh, then just sanding things, slipping bits of glue in to try to make everything nicely, you know, hold in place. So there we go. Yep. All right. And that is about to, that's quickly getting to the point where it's about it for the, um, for the uh, hull, for the first layer of planking. And then you'll see me start to do the uh, second layer. Or, sorry, no, the shear strike. Not the second layer, shear strike. And now that I think about it, I think it's the shear strike where I ended up sticking it into my thumb. Yeah, it, that's, that's, that's where it happened. That's where it happened. Uh, that really hurt. As you can see, I skipped that part after. There you go. So, there we go. Trying to keep everything nicely pinned. Try to get this uh, second one in. And, yeah. So, this went on pretty easily. And then I saw that one of them was met mixed up versus the other. And I had to do it all over again. <sighs> oh, well, hey. Bump into all the hard bits so that you do the, uh, so you don't gotta bump into them again later, right? Okay, so there we go. And then this is where I tried some, uh, something interesting with the, uh, you know, other shear strike to try to get rid of this pin effect. And unfortunately, it doesn't quite work. Here's the method I tried now. Alright, shaky camera work, but I just tested out something that I think is gonna work pretty good for uh, fixing a little issue I have with this kit right now. The issue I have is how the heck do I make this thing hold together without using a bunch of nails so they're gonna be exposed. You know, seeing all those holes just, for me at least, would kind of ruin things. So I'm gonna see. I can't get a little creative and conniving perhaps here. There we go and uh, use a combination of super glue like you know as a sort of a tack <laughs> and wood glue as just a way to uh, you know get this thing together so yeah so that there that right there this is the goop so I have this is that goopy extra thick one not that the extra thin couldn't help but then I'd have to do this in like all in like a, one second. So there we go. Let's see if my faith in this is rewarded. Yeah, I should have probably mentioned before I uh, talk about this, but spoiler alert, it's not. It's not. So I tried using, you know, a clip in an easy place to kind of make things continue to be good. And well, it's, it looked good from the bottom. When I looked at it from the top, it was like kind of curving on me in a way that wasn't going to work. So I was like... Grumble, grumble. Wasn't happy about that, but that's life. So anyways, yep. Here's uh, me then talking about everything at this point, and uh, here's the end of the vid, and um, I hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed. All right, here we go. All right, so inevitably to fill up some of that time lapse, I have expressed probably in less than nice terms my extreme dislike for these little pinholes right here and for using pins because uh unseen blooper i rammed one into my thumb like and about this deep too my apologies for any wincing i just caused there yeah i i screamed like a banshee when that happened <laughs> several swearings the wife came down because oh my god he's screaming she thought i locked my thumb off nope just stuck something into it that hurt Anyways, but the thing I hate more is these little pin marks right here. I don't know, it just kind of ruins the effect to me for some reason. I, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm weird. I'm weird. But, uh, here. As you can see, even in the professionally looking box art, you can see them. Right there. So... I guess maybe everyone might appreciate it, I don't know, if I found some way to not require that. But that is a fixture that's going to be a, almost a video in its own right. So that'll take a few days, and that's more than I've got to go with, considering this is, uh, this is like Saturday, and it's Sunday when I try to get these things edited and ready to release, so... 
Until the next time, I am Rich. This is my show, RX Models. This has been Mamoli Lexington Part 3. I hope you enjoyed. And now, time for the uh, YouTube dance of like, share, subscribe. Hooray! All right. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good one. Peace out.